Like all of it is what we call artificial intelligence, right? And, right. and there are just there there are different approaches and different techniques that are used. Deep learning, as we discuss in the book, is is the most sophisticated and most effective approach to artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, it, it really is teaching a machine to reason and to think similar to the way that we do it it's it's using the same kind of uh approach in, in a computer sense that uh, our brain uses to process information right so the technology is really here and maturing very quickly yep. um you know it's been around for a while as you know like a, a google map the way the reason that Google Maps knows how to most effectively get you from here to here is because of machine learning and because it's mm. collected tons and tons of data around mm. that and analyzed it and figured it out over time. Um, most of the time that we are now interacting with customer service reps through a chatbot, this is just a machine learning algorithm that we're talking to that has learned how to simulate a uh, you know a, a, a human interaction. And, and to chat GPT, which is a fantastic revolutionary tool, yeah. um, but will doubtless be supplanted quickly by new technologies, right? That evolve. I think the, the, the fallacy with our understanding of large language models like chat GPT or any of these technologies is that these tools can think for their own. Yeah. and kind of create new ideas uh, and that's not really how they work uh chat gpt for instance as a large language model has been trained on enormous amounts of human interaction and data and it does compile that data and synthesize it very very effectively but really what it is is it is looking at the words that have been used and just predicting what should the next word be. And it's just a series of uh, predictions. So what that means is really two things. I mean, one of them, when you are asking it a question, uh, ChatGPT doesn't really know the answer or have the answer stored. ChatGPT is analyzing those words that you've used, oh. and then it's using its understanding to predict what words would be the right kind of response. It's basing that. So that's the first thing. The second is that it's basing that on words that have already been provided in the public domain, the things that it's connected to, the things that it's learned from. So that means, frankly, that it's not creating new ideas. It's just synthesizing all those ideas that are out there, all those responses to your question. It's kind of, it's uh, predicting which one is best or how to best answer that, but it's not producing anything new. It's not at this point uh, able to stimulate creative thought. That's where I think MD, the technology is really going, is not this idea of synthesizing data that exists. It's how do we get these machines to really think creatively? And it'll be interesting to see where that goes, but I'm, I'm sure that's the next frontier. Chat GPT, AI, Google Board, what a revolution, like the age of AI. Yes. This is... No, I don't know if anyone could predict in 2023 we would be here today with ChatGPT no. and Google Bar. And Google came back really strong. I use both both tools. Anytime I'm asking something, I open Google Bar and ChatGPT on, on the two tabs and they give me similar answers now. At the beginning, ChatGPT was really, I think, far ahead. Now Google Bar is getting really good. And then a lot of other AI tools is coming in the market. So what your thought on these AI tools? What are some of your favorite AI tools? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I, I mean, I frankly, I love ChatGPT. Uh, I think it's, I think it is a, a wondrous uh, revolution of a tool. Um, but I feel that, like, I understand what it is, and so I feel that I use it in the right way. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have seen uh, in the universities I've, I've taught in, uh, I've seen many students use it, right, and. Frankly, uh, the experience has all been the same. It takes those students who are struggling or students that aren't really putting a lot of effort into their studies, they use that tool and they come out even worse. Mm. Uh, the students that are, that are very dedicated and, and working hard use that tool in the right way and they become even better. And it's oh, because wow. 
uh, what we find is those those poor to middling students simply take the the question that was asked of them, they plug that into the ChatGPT bar, and they take the answer, and they think they're done. Wow. And as I was explaining to you, <laughs> that's not how ChatGPT works. It's it's looking at your question. It's looking at all the work that's out there. It's synthesizing everything. A, it doesn't mean that it's accurate. It, right. it will definitely make up things yeah and and b it doesn't mean that it's relevant yeah. uh it, um you know the 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 kind of instruction that we are giving in the university is always very nuanced and and um not so straightforward that you could just tap something into a chat gpt bar and get a response back but i'll say like using it as a way to test your ideas uh using it as a way as a a research tool at the beginning to say, tell me everything you know about X and, and having it pull the data. I mean, frankly, that's a little more effective than a number of Google searches, right? For that same yes. kind of information. Um, it's a wonderful tool in that way to sort of challenge, to sort of think uh, um, uh, constructively. I, I will use it, frankly, to prepare for lectures. I will tell chat GPT, here are the topics I'm talking about. These are the things I'm presenting. What do you think? What are some questions that students might have? Mm -hmm. It will formulate some questions that might come back at me. Okay, great. How about this response? Yep. Yeah. And so it, it, it just helps prepare me you know, as a preparation tool. It's really a wonderful tool. So is, is the AI using us or are we using the AI? <laughs> yeah. Who knows at this point, right? I would like to think we're still in control at this point, for sure. But um, but it's hard to say sometimes. With, with all these machine learning algorithms, anytime you, we feed some questions, the is learning as well yeah. as we learn. So will yeah. uh, so will AI replace analyst, data analyst in no. the jobs? Some of the some of the medial work, like if you have analysts who are uh, some of the data collection, some of the coding, some of the things that uh, that a, a machine could do better. Sure, right. Mm -hmm. But in terms of creative thought, in terms of interpretation, in terms of fitting whatever the analysis is producing in the broader context of the business and developing a set of really actionable recommendations, no, humans need to do that. You might be able to start with what ChatGPT says, mm -hmm. but anyone who feels like they can get their, the, uh, the, the uh, secrets to unlocking their business success from ChatGPT is, is frankly in the wrong business. Right. Uh, it, humans are needed there for all those reasons. Uh, uh, to to complement the tool, um, to add creative thought, right? To to bring rationality. Um, these are things that we must do. The tool is just an enabler for us. Okay. But I will say, those professionals and those analysts who learn how to use ChatGPT and adopt that technology are going to be much more successful than those that that haven't, uh, and those that refuse to or don't know how to are going to are going to find themselves way well far behind um because it just makes you so much faster and yeah. more efficient and and frankly more effective <laughs>